Space weather has really quieted down over the past few days, but is it the calm before the storm? That story and more in the news this week. Space weather this week has really quieted down, especially compared to that stealthy solar storm we had just a little bit more than a week ago that was so intense it actually brought Aurora clear down to Indiana. And the funny thing was that it happened when many of us scientists who are chasing these stealthy solar storms were in Bern, Switzerland to study exactly that. And believe it or not, the debate still rage is on between us all as we continue to try to figure out how best to detect these things so we don't get caught off guard like we were last week. Meanwhile, the sun has been uh, moving region 2706 off to the west limb. You amateur radio operators have enjoyed some decent radio propagation because it's boosted the solar flux, but we are now saying goodbye to that region as it rotates to the back side of the sun, and now the sun is spotless again. The good news, however, is that new regions are going to be rotating into Earth view here in the next few days, and hopefully that will give uh, radio propagation a little bit of a boost. Now, you Aurora photographers, you also are still laying in wait since that huge solar storm that we had a little bit more than a week ago, but we do have a well-formed coronal hole that is going to be rotating into the Earth strike zone here, it's probably starting sometime next week, early next week, so that should give you some new chance for uh, Aurora that may not last very long and it may not be as strong as the last storm we had, but it might actually bring Aurora down to mid-latitudes. Switching to our M-flare threat meter, you can see we are still in solar minimum conditions when it comes to X-ray flux and therefore by proxy the solar flux as well. Right around the 18th, you actually saw the X-ray flux ramp up a bit. That was when region 2706 rotated into Earth view and it stayed just around the B floor easily for about two weeks. And so you radio uh, amateurs enjoyed some decent propagation on the bands on the Earth's day side for a while, but now as we get uh, the beginning of May, we see that that region has rotated off of the sun's west limb and to the sun's backside. And of course, the solar flux drops right with it. The x-ray flux drops right with it. And we're back to poor radio conditions for you guys. Luckily, this is not going to last too, too long because we do have those new regions that are going to be rotating into Earth view here in the next few days. It probably won't boost the solar flux too much, but it might just get us back up to marginal propagation. Switching to our solar storm conditions, you can see back on the 20th is when we got slammed by that stealthy solar storm. Now it's still debatable whether or not this storm was caused just by some fast wind or, or it did the sun launch an additional eruption that got embedded in this fast wind and then that's what kicked us up to a moderate level storm. Now. It doesn't matter because it was bigger than we predicted it to be, and that is a problem for us. And the fact that this storm happened like this when many of us scientists were already in Bern, Switzerland, trying to figure out how to detect storms just like this, tells us a lot about how common these, these types of storms are becoming in our daily lives. So this was really a timely event, and I'm so glad that we can add it to our roster. Now, since that storm died down, you can see we've kind of gone back to unsettled and now normal conditions, and we've been hovering around unsettled to normal conditions over the past week or so. But this is going to change here pretty soon, because the beginning of next week gives us another chance for a solar storm. And with this incredibly strong yet stealthy solar storm, we got aurora views in many parts of the world, even at high latitudes in the northern hemisphere where aurora season is supposed to be pretty much over because of the midnight sun. Like this in Finland, and in Norway, we got views in Scotland, and in Ireland, as we travel over the Atlantic, we saw views in Iceland. And as we got to Canada and the Western Hemisphere, we saw views in Yukon and in Ontario, in Manitoba, and in Saskatchewan, and of course in Alberta. Beautiful shots in Alberta. Now, down in the States, we actually saw it in Alaska, which is also fighting a midnight sun. But we also saw it in North Dakota and in Illinois 
in Wisconsin, down to Iowa, multiple places in Iowa. We saw it in Michigan and all over Lake Superior. We saw it in Montana and in Minnesota. We saw it in Washington State, and it even made it all the way south to Indiana. Now, for the nor or southern hemisphere, we saw gorgeous aurora that lit up the skies in both New Zealand and in Tasmania. So what else does the sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is Stereo A. It's our backside monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's Stereo A staring at the sun from behind. And what you notice right away is that the backside of the sun sure looks a lot more active than the front side. We've got three bright active regions that are actually firing off little mini flares. A couple of them look like they've launched a couple solar storms, in fact. So these regions will be rotating into Earth view here in the next week or so. And that would be a breath of relief for you amateur radio operators and emergency responders who are looking for a boost in the radio propagation. The other nice thing is that we actually have the edge of a coronal hole that's looking like it's got some activity. That's stealthy solar storm breeding ground right there. And we've got yet another coronal hole that's going to be rotating into view along with these active regions. So it looks like in the next couple of weeks, our sun's actually going to be pretty busy. Switching to your solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, as we've said before, it's a very quiet week, folks. At high latitudes, NOAA's only expecting unsettled conditions with maybe about a 15% chance of active conditions due to a remnant coronal hole that's rotating through the Earth strike zone right now and maybe going to give us a little bit of disturbed solar wind, but really not much to talk about. At mid-latitudes, the conditions are even quieter, only expecting normal to unsettled conditions with only about a 5 to 10% chance of activity. But this should change the beginning of next week. We might bump up to active conditions or even minor storm conditions, especially at high latitudes, when we get hit with yet another solar storm. Switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, everything is still in the green when it comes to solar flares. We are back to a spotless sun, and that means, of course, that the solar flux remains very low. We're back into poor radio propagation for you amateur radio operators and emergency responders. The nice thing is that at the end of the week, we should start seeing some uh, evidence of the new regions that are going to be rotating into Earth view, and it might bump the solar flux up again and hopefully get us back into marginal propagation. So the sun's activity this week is kind of, but what do you expect when we're so close to solar minimum? At least a lot more people now are beginning to talk about how it looks like we're zipping through the solar minimum much faster than predicted. So that's some good news for all of us, I think. Meanwhile, we have to wait a few days for you amateur radio operators to get some new regions rotating into Earth view that should bump up uh, radio propagation, hopefully back to the marginal levels. And you Aurora photographers, you have good news on the horizon too next week because this coronal hole will be rotating into the Earth strike zone and hopefully giving you yet another solar storm and some chances for Aurora. And then you GPS operators, well, you should be enjoying some clean reception right now with such a quiet sun. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching.